That's not as fun to say as the sick Pokemon on the team, but it was pretty important in his win. You know, really applying that pressure. We didn't even see Tapu Koko in those games. What do we think in this matchup compared to the last one? I, I don't think Kartana is the play, to be quite blunt. You know, I think it has a great matchup against some of these Pokemon that are present on Ma Naoto's side of the field. You know, that Lunala certainly would not appreciate the knockoff that we saw revealed on Kartana from Eric back last round. That being said, Groudon, Salamence, and Cinnaroar are three Pokemon that Kartana does not like and honestly makes it a very tall ask, I think, to bring in a game one situation. You know, I don't really know that Tapu Koko is necessarily the Pokemon either that you'd want to bring in the setup. So how does uh, Eric deal with Stack Attacker? That's my biggest concern right now. It you know, he doesn't have those clear and obvious answers. He doesn't have a ground on of his own. You know, Niall Ego may be packing one of those options, but it may, on the other hand, just be completely lacking in a way to deal with that. If you can't deal with it, then you're giving Naoto complete control of the speed. You're letting him set his trick rooms when he wants, and that's gonna be a huge, huge problem if he's able to play that way with no concern coming in from his opponent. It's all going to come down to Eric's game plan. You know, we saw him execute a strategy in his, the last round that worked out very well for him. He's definitely going to have to switch things up. And whether or not he thinks that his Kartana is up to the task should be revealed very shortly. Well, Incineroar and Kyogre are going to be the lead for Eric Rios. I'm sorry that I'm uh, <laughs> trying to ruin that for you guys at home who haven't quite seen it yet. But that's going to be matched by the Salamence and Lunala uh, from Naoto. So very interesting leads. I don't think that's something we've seen so far no. uh, over the course of this tournament. Brand new for us, maybe brand new for you. And we'll see exactly how these trainers want to navigate it. And Salamence and Lunala, not a pair that necessarily screams Trick Room. I really like how Eric led going into this game. You know, Kyogre certainly is one of the Pokemon on his team that can damage Stack Attacka at least a little bit. Fake Out can obviously stop Trick Room for a period of time, you know, one turn that the flinch applies. And maybe Eric thought that that was enough going into this game to give him an advantage. With Naoto leading the combination of the Lunala and the Salamence, not only does he bring out his own Intimidate onto the field, you know, to sort of weaken the damage potential that that Incineroar can throw back on the Lunala, you know, he can also just start dealing big damage. I mean, yes, Lunala is one of those Pokemon that loves to set up Trick Room sometimes, but it also gets access to one of the most powerful Z-moves in the game and can just sort of run through Eric's team if he gives it the opportunity. Well, Salamence leaving the field immediately uh, for Naoto. No concerns on that one. Once that gone, doesn't want to take a potential Ice Beam, and he also wants to control the weather himself. Desolate land coming into play from this Primal Groudon, making that Kyogre's day a little bit harder as soon as things start. Uh, we are gonna see the Lunala immediately starting out with the Moongeist Beam, uh, starting to deal as much damage as possible. And the Moongeist Beam targeting the Kyogre, not that much damage, but it's certainly gonna start adding up in these instances. Yeah. We do see the berry popped. I would like to say that that's a berry that is going to be reducing the amount of damage done. Uh, the Snarl from Incineroar damage much reduced by the Cobra, uh, Colba berry. My apologies. The special attacks are going down. Uh, but, I mean, you know, the Shadow Shield was keeping you safe anyway. We didn't see a successful move from Kyogre in that turn. So the Desolate Land making sure one of those water type attacks was not acceptable in that turn. And what an interesting item from that Lunala. You know, it's not one of those items that I think we've seen often in the 2019 format, especially in the Ultra format. You know, each type has one of these corresponding berries that will weaken the damage of an attack of that type when the berry is consumed. But not only is Shadow Shield now gone, the Colber Berry is gone as well. Yep. That Lunala's special attack has been dropped at stage. It's not going to be able to do much damage, if at all, this turn. Yeah, it's really interesting to see exactly kind of how they match up in this one. The Kyogre did decide to protect, so not in a great position weather-wise, and not in a great position uh, without switching out. Uh, the Incineroar does take a Moongeist Beam for its troubles, only a little bit of damage there, and is immediately followed up along with a Dragon Claw, maybe trying to call a switch in that regard. Uh, we do see there, I believe, the U-turn uh, from that Incineroar getting out a little bit more damage down on this Lunala. And obviously Eric has a very clear option here that's gonna help that Kyogre out. The Rayquaza, certainly something that would help. And there it is, matching up, bringing Airlock to the field. And that was really what we saw Naoto go all in on, a manual switch into Airlock that last turn. That's why he Dragon Clawed. That's why he Moongeist beamed into that slot. Neither particularly effective, but he's now given up a piece of information 
And we also know he has to be a little more concerned about exactly what this Kyogre can do. Yeah, and that's why the Kyogre remained on the field that turn as well. You know, Eric took a look at the field, you know, he looked at this Groudon and he made a prediction. He said, I don't think this Groudon is going to go for the knockout onto this Incineroar necessarily. You know, my Kyogre is safe to protect for a turn. And even if the Incineroar does get knocked out, that's an opportunity for me to get my Rayquaza out onto the field unthreatened. He knows now that this Groudon is carrying that Dragon Claw tech that we saw earlier on today and really threatens this matchup very heavily. Um, so Eric can play around that, and I really like how he positioned himself that way. You know, a lot of times I think when you run Rayquaza and Kyogre together, you want to catch opponents by surprise with a manual switch and an immediate water attack, and Eric just taking his time, and it really paid off. Yeah, and Naoto didn't get what he wanted out that turn, but this turn, things are going to be a whole lot better for uh, <laughs> Eric. He's got control of the weather with Delta Stream in play, and now he's got a sword stance on his Rayquaza. We saw it in the last game. It was so problematic for uh, you know his opponent in that one to deal with. It's not going to be easy. The Moongeist Beam landing onto this Kyogre, bringing it just under half. Uh, but then the Precipice Blades following up. This Kyogre very slow oh. and holding on from the Precipice Blades. That oh, means man. that there's going to be a retaliation. In this case, it's just an Ice Beam. Maybe expecting that Salamence switch in there. And that Groudon moving first certainly opens up some interesting opportunities. You know, it is going to potentially have to take a hit from Rayquaza, but this Lunal has been getting away with just sitting on the field for quite some time now. You have to wonder if the fact that Naoto hasn't gone for a Trick Room yet was so that he could, you know, wait to see how this Groudon and this Kyogre are going to match up speed-wise in this game and in this match, so that he doesn't necessarily put himself in a disadvantage, uh, you know, position. We saw the Kyogre move second. We know the Groudon is probably faster than it right now. A trick Room would have been really bad in that situation. So by waiting, you know, he, the Kyogre is definitely, you know, threatened to be knocked out this turn by something. And it looks like Eric just moved, you know, one yep. turn too soon with that Ice Beam. Yeah, the Groudon does leave the field in place of the Salamence. That's going to be really bad if the Ice Beam heads over in that direction again. Uh, of course, there is going to be uh, a few options coming out here, but the most important one is Dragon Ascent. Uh, Dragon Ascent landing immediately into that Salamence. And uh, guess what? It's a clean there knockout. You <laughs> when you don't Mega Revolve, you're not able uh, to do any damage, or you're not going to take much damage, so you can't deal any in retaliation. And we are seeing, after that Dragon Ascent, another Moongeist Beam. Consistent attacks coming out of this Lunala. And there's so many threats to it in the back. The Moongeist Beam is enough uh, to pick up the last little bit of damage on this Kyogre. And what I'm interested to, to see is, why was the Kyogre such a threat? Why was that the thing he wanted to deal with? Was it the threat of it in the Trick Room? And now that's gone, is he going to try and find an opportunity to set that up? Something like a Stack Attacker of his fourth Pokemon could be essential for the Groudon to sweep through. And I think if he's got it, he's going to have to reveal it now. I totally agree with you with that statement. You know, Eric does have the opportunity here to send in that Incineroar. You know, I don't think that's too risky for him. He gets an Intimidate, he gets a Fake Out, and this might give him an opportunity to try and do something to stop this Stack Attacka with his Rayquaza. But instead, it is going to be that Kartana that Eric brings. And as we were talking about in Team Preview, like you said, Kartana really is one of those Pokemon that has the best, best matchup on paper to knock out this Stack Attacka. But that being said, Lunala, Stack Attacka, both these Pokemon get access to Trick Room. If if Naoto wanted to, and if he feels very confident in the fact that Eric would be going for a big knockout of some kind this turn, he might be able to use Trick Room with both these Pokemon if he's trained him that way, get it up guaranteed, and then that Groudon can come in and just start, you know, dealing damage, getting knockouts, and sort of powering through this end game. The biggest problem with that is if you press Trick Room with both of them, they do both have access to it. Uh, one of the Pokemon leaves the field, uh, so you don't get a knockout come through. You end up leaving the Trick Room actually uh, in kind of its neutral state. Uh, we'll see if that's exactly what he went for. Incineroar comes in, lands an Intimidate on both of them. More important on Stack Attacker than it is Lunala. And we'll see exactly what option uh, he's decided to go for. The Protect out of the Stack Attacker wants to keep it safe from this Kartana. Uh, but we are going to see uh, the attack from Kartana head that way. We oh, know he Lunala. Went for it. Yeah, Lunala did move last, revealing that. There's two Trick Room setters on the field, and the one that's been most prevalent over the last couple of months isn't the one setting Trick Room. And while you're distracted with the classic look over here technique, I believe <laughs> they're using cartoons, uh, the Lunal is going to be the one to set that up. This is a great position right now. There's so many options, I think, 
for this stack attacker. You've got to be a little bit careful of this potential turn with the fake out and then something like the Kartana following up. But if you're the Lunala stack attacker player in Nauto, you've got to be feeling pretty good about the next uh, four or five turns. Yeah, and with the Groudon in the back as well, it can, you know, take the field with, you know, not being intimidated. Eric would have to switch to get that Incineroar off the field to save that for later. You know, it's just such a tough spot for him to be in. Late Trick Room, I think, is one of uh, the most uh, interesting strategies to see played out at during the video game championships, just because of these opportunities that it opens up later on in the game. You know, yes, Stack Attacka switches out, but we know Eric's last three Pokemon, Kartana, Mega Rayquaza, Incineroar. Fortunately for Naoto, this Groudon can handle two of those Pokemon very well, the two Pokemon that are on the field. And as a result, I think saving that Stack Attacka for later, saving it for when yep. the Mega Rayquaza returns to the field, which might be a little bit sooner than anticipated, um, is sort of Eric's last lifeline going into this game one. Yeah, Incineroar leaves the field with the U-turn, immediately replaced by the Mega Rayquaza Delta Stream back into play. We'll remove the sunlight uh, from the desolate land. Though that's a little bit of a weakness uh, going towards Groudon, but not the biggest concern. Another Moon Guys Beam following up from this Lunala. It's just been consistent with them. The Moon Guys Beam connects with that Kartana. Not enough to concern it with a knockout. The Leaf Blade into Groudon oh, brings it to no. one health with the critical hit right there. That is oh. so dangerous. It's going to be so hard to keep that Groudon around right now. But it's in Trick Room. The big thing here, Extreme Speed, a prevalent option on this um, Rayquaza, easy enough to pick that up. And then a whole lot coming out from Lunala. That Incineroar as well in the back of Eric's party could easily knock that Groudon out with a fake out once it returns to the field. So, you know, Eric just very comfortably staying calm. You know, yes, the Lunala did get a nice amount of damage down onto that Kartana, but it was still able to attack and that was what was important. And that's why Naoto must save that Groudon for later on in the matchup. Maybe once that Ooh. Kartana and the threat of something like the Extreme Speed has been removed, from the field. Yeah, the extreme speed uh, doing very, very little to the stack attacker. We are going to see one more Moon Guys beam <laughs> from Lunala. It, it's it, very good at this. Yeah, it's been consistent with it across the whole day. Another one landing into this Kartana. And the fact it's taken two of them quite comfortably is going to be an indication of the item. Speaking of items, that is the animation for knockoff there. Uh, not enough, even though Lunala is exceptionally weak to those dark type moves. We do see the lack of a same type attack bonus or a dark aura from Evil Tal means that Lunala is sticking around. And Lunala also consumed that Culber Berry earlier on in the game. So Knockoff didn't even get to take advantage of the fact that the damage is boosted when the Pokemon is still holding the item. So Lunala gets the opportunity to attack again. The Stack Attacka gets the opportunity to go for something big for this Rayquaza potentially. Um, you know, Lunala can't be knocked out by an extreme speed because it's a ghost type. Yeah, that's really good to have that as your Pokemon on low down. Obviously, Kartana knows that it may get knocked out this turn. Uh, so an Incineroar switch in to make sure you get an Intimidate down on Stack Attacker, which is in a good position right now to go on the offensive. Certainly not a bad idea. One thing we do have to be considerate of, though, is that we've seen a number of turns of Trick Room <laughs> used. I was about to say, Naoto needs to start capitalizing on those as soon as possible. And the activation of Rocky MZ bringing Continental Crush into play. Really good way to do that. You have to wonder. I mean, the strong winds are still in play. So this Mega Rayquaza a, if that's the target, would it it's be taking not. as much damage? But that's the Incineroar that's going to be unfortunately flattened by this attack. You've got to remember as well that that Incineroar was coming in. So before that, it was a Kartana. I think a really good read there uh, by uh, Naoto to make sure he got a knockout in this turn. Maybe he feels like there's a way to deal with it. We see why this Lunala has just been consistently dealing damage. We knew about its item not being the Lunalium Z. Um, my biggest concern right now, though, is the damage from that is going to be in a tough position. Of course, Dragon Ascent knockouts come with a, a negative in the drop to defenses, uh, but that makes things a whole lot easier for this stack attacker. It does, and you have to wonder how many turns of Trick Room are left. Will this Mega Rayquaza and Kartana combination be enough to power through these Trick Room Pokemon in the form of the Stack Attacka and the Primal Groudon? You know, both all these Pokemon really on both sides of the field, you know, they have been weakened by damage. Stack Attacka does have the benefit of the Beast Boost that it got from the KO from the Continental Crush, but even then, you know, it's 
it's a very strong Pokemon, and it does have an advantage against both the Rayquaza and Kartana, especially with the strong winds gone, and especially with the fact that Trick Room is still active on the field, and it's going to be moving first. Eric is forced to sort of try and stall out the remainder of that Trick Room. He could go for something like an Extreme Speed onto that Groudon, but, you know, that could leave him in a spot where potentially a one versus two, or maybe even a one-on-one -on -one situation against the Stack Attacker. Yeah, well, the Groudon is removed from play along with Desolate Land. It uh, will be an easy kind of uh, knockout there with extreme speed, but while the Trick Room is still in play, the Kartana is felled by the Gyro Ball. Obviously, such a discrepancy there in the speed. An easy knockout. Uh, just a confirmation for those of you guys at home. It is the defense getting boosted by those Beast Boosts. That's now two stages, which easily makes up for the boost the Rayquaza took earlier with the Swords Dance. Now, this isn't going to be the most thrilling of matches. And of course, Eric, knowing his fate, knowing it's going to be kind of uh, a negative for him to try and wear down this stack attacker. Once you let the Beast Boost come into play, he just concedes the game over to Naoto. And I like that forfeit there. You know, I don't think there was too much information he could have learned at that point moving forward. Stack attacker was certainly in its happy place with that Trick Room on the field with those Beast Boosts. And overall, it would have been just a very tall ask for that Rayquaza to power through. So, you know, a very, I think, smart uh, forfeit there. But you have to wonder, how is he going to adjust moving forwards into game two. We saw him lead the combination of the Kyogre and the Incineroar going into game one, which seemed great on paper. You know, he has access to Fake Out. The Kyogre can certainly threaten it to deal a lot of damage to the Pokemon on the field. But, you know, the fact that Naoto brought two Trick Room users to the game, I think really gave him the opportunity to say, you know, look, I you were able to stop one of my Trick Room setters, or maybe you threatened one of my Trick Room setters. But I have a whole nother one that you can't stop. And unless Eric finds a way to stop Trick Room. I don't think, you know, this might be the end of his tournament. I wonder if that was a surprise to him. You know, we obviously have the benefit of knowing a little bit about the teams, knowing that Lunala and Stack Attacker were both carrying Trick Room. And I do wonder if that was a surprise to Eric, if that yeah. was something that came along and he went, oh no, I've picked the wrong Trick Room yeah, user yeah. to try and stop. He had a number of opportunities actually to, to deal with that Lunala. You know, I think Lunala not having access to Lunalium Z is an interesting adaptation. I do really believe that, you know, it's one of those Pokemon that should be dealing damage. And we oh. saw Continental Crush. Uh, we do have uh, the leads over in a preview for us. There is going to be some adaptations. You guys finally get to see them. It's Cinero <laughs> and Kyoga for Eric Rios and Naoto Mizubuchi uh, with the Lunala and, of course, the Tapu Fini, which has been a really good and consistent Pokemon whenever it makes an appearance at this tournament. Yeah, certainly an interesting Lunala overall. You know, that Cobra Berry, I think, was a good indication early on that this Lunala might not be as it seems, but that information is all out in the open as we go into Game 2. Naoto just one win away from advancing to top four here at the Pokemon World Championships. And, you know, changing things up with the presence of the Tapu Fini. I don't think Tapu Fini is here necessarily for that Misty Surge ability. Um, you know, Tapu Fini is one of those Pokemon I think trainers bring when they want to take a bulkier sort of presence moving forwards in the game, gets access to moves like Heal Post, maybe Icy Wind, if that's something that Naoto wants to go for. Um, but overall, just a very, you know, interesting adjustment. I I'm curious if this is going to dictate a little bit of a different approach to this game too. Yeah, well, Kyoga landing a Protect, no real concern there. And Tapu Fini matching huh. it with a Protect of its own. That's certainly the safest way to navigate an opening turn. Kyoga's not going to get any damage put down on it early on. And Tapu Fini is going to do exactly the same. Both these uh, Pokemon uh, defending themselves. We do see the Culber Berry activating on that uh, Lunala, indicating the Snarl there doing limited damage. Obviously, it's a pittance. There's going to be <laughs> the benefit of Shadow Shield, the benefit of the Culber Berry, but the special attack does go down. And that's something in the last game that I don't think we touched on enough. You know, he got snarled early on. He never switched it around. And that's why his Moonguys beams were just doing so little. I think that's something he's going to have to consider as this game goes on. And talk about an interesting Pokemon that might not be as it seems. Protect on Tapu Fini. Not something you see that often. Certainly will help it remain on the field for a bit longer if it's staring down a Kartana, like uh, Eric just switched in. Yeah, well, the Kartana is going to be uh, struggling to take some of these hits. We do know that it actually takes three Moonguys Beams after a Snarl to get there. Uh, there's the Tapu Fini and the Nature's Madness. That's going to bring it down to a little bit of an easier number to hit right now. 
Incineroar just keeps doing what it was doing before, though. That Tapu Fini is getting a special attack lowered by the Snarl, uh, and the Snarl is going to miss the Lunala. And Not going to connect there. And that might be critical. I mean, look at how much health that Kartana has left. That extra Snarl down on that Lunala might have allowed it to survive for another turn. Um, but, you know, again, interesting that uh, Eric switched things up. Interesting that that Kartana is really in a tough spot. Yes, it's the fastest thing on the field. It can certainly have its choice of targets right now, but we know that knockoff won't be enough to knock out that Lunala, we know from previous rounds that that Kartana does have access to the Z move, and Tapu Fini certainly would have been the target you'd want to hit with that. Yeah, Tapu Fini getting off the field, maybe a little bit concerned about what this Kartana could do. Salamence coming in. Yeah, and Salamence will bring with it that Intimidate as well, so just more stacking up against this Kartana. It will not be able to attack this Lunala thanks to the Protect, but even if it could, that knockoff would not have been enough. Yeah, we'll see a whole lot of attacks heading towards this Lunala, and <laughs> none of them getting through. The Salamence switch in going completely unpunished in this instance. It came in, it landed Intimidates on two Pokémon that do sometimes use their uh, physical attacks. I mean, Kartana always. Uh, the Incineroar sometimes, uh, but really nice to get that down. Make that Kartana a little bit more manageable through the combination of Nature's Madness as well. It'll definitely get there. Here's yeah. the Mega Revolution from <laughs> Salamence, though. Yeah, and you have to wonder if you're Eric, you know, what do you even do with your Kartana at this point? Do you try to switch it out or do you try to save it for later? I mean, Naoto hasn't dropped a single Pokemon, certainly has a very commanding position on the field as the Kartana was knocked out by a Hyper Voice there. You know, Naoto just doing a great job of showing, you know, how he made it to this top eight and potentially how he'll even make it beyond this round into top four at this tournament. Well, Moon Guys Beam heading towards the uh, Incineroar, probably not where you wanted it. It's Incineroar doesn't appreciate it, though, does opt to leave the field right after that. Uh, certainly a good turn, a good opening carved out for Nato. Uh, really enjoying the way he's adapted into this game. Actually dropping Trick Room and just playing fantastically without it seems to be really successful for him. Yeah, there's really no way that Eric can touch this Lunala on the field. You know, the Moon Guys Beam certainly isn't as powerful as I think we've sort of uh, grown accustomed to throughout the Ultra format, but, you know, it's not taking damage and it's able to consistently bring the Pokemon on Eric's side of the field within knockout range for other things that, um, you know, are present in the party, like the Hyper Voice from that Mega Salamence, or, you know, maybe that Groudon or that it's Stack Attacko, depending on what Naoto decided to bring into this game. I Eric, it it's a tough sort of decision he has to make here. He needs to decide, you know, he, he can fake out the Salamence here, and that might th make things a little bit easier. But if Naoto has that Groudon in the back, you know, he could send that in for the Salamence spot, you know, take that little bit of chip from Fake Out, but not allow Kyogre to go for a water attack. You know, he needs to find an opening here. And unfortunately for Eric, Naoto's just not going to get him that opportunity. Yeah, I mean, he's going to have to be relying on Rayquaza to be the last one. Of course, he is already down a Pokemon in the count, the uh, Kartana being knocked out. But, you know, it, it, it's, it's tough, right? Like, it's tough to find those openings when you've got one less Pokemon. Groudon does come in, Desolate Land, replacing Primordial Sea. And so, you know, we did see it in game one. Uh, Eric went for it and did get caught with that. Of course, Salamence keeping itself safe this turn. A nice little protect there, making sure it's not caught short by a fake out. We are going to see a number of moves just failing to deal the damage required right there. Uh, it's not going to be the prettiest of turns. Of course, uh -oh. the uh, protect is so, so important. Uh, and that's going to be a very dead turn for uh, Eric Rios. I think Eric was really hoping that a powerful attack, water type attack from that Kyogre, such as the water spout, or maybe even the skull that, again, we saw earlier on today, would have given him an opening. But that Groudon switching in, there's really nothing Eric could have done to stop that. And Naoto just, you know, recognizing the current board state, realizing that he needs that weather on the field. Eric could certainly try and get the rain back if he wanted it, but, you know, he's going to have to switch out that Kyogre, and then whatever comes in, whatever that last Pokemon is that he has, is going to take a ton of damage from the combination of the Salamence and that Groudon. You know, I gotta say, yes, Kyogre's gonna be stuck ice beaming for the foreseeable future, but, you know, that's such a tough decision Ooh. to have to make. Well, it may not be afforded too many opportunities to do that. A combination of Double Edge from Salamence and Precipice Blades from this Groudon causing a whole lot of issues. Uh, that does mean, of course, that Kyogre is forced to ice beam back. There wasn't any Rayquaza switch in right there, and it does fell the Salamence. So the Pokemon count still within touching distance for Eric Rios, but he's still behind, and honestly, leaving this Groudon 
out on unopposed for a couple turns probably means that it's Rayquaza in the back here. I think he's relying on that. And you've got to wonder, you know, will that be enough? We did see the Groudon reveal the Dragon Claw early on. There it is. It's going to be airlock right now. He's got to be careful. There is one option that I think Naoto has to look at. Maybe an easy way around it for Eric is to just keep airlock in play. But if he removes the Groudon right now, then the, the Delta Stream comes up. Then he can bring it in a Desolate Land later. And that's going to game set a match at that point, right? Yeah, it's a very tough spot for Eric to be in, especially when you also look at that Kyogre on the field. You know, it is within striking range of either of these Pokemon for a knockout. And you have to be wondering, you know, how do I maneuver? How do I figure things out? We did see the Kyogre and the Groudon match up earlier on in game one, and the Groudon was faster than the Kyogre. So it, it's just going to come down to board positioning. It's going to come down to strategy. And I like how Eric went for the Mega Evolution here. You know, yes, it is going to remove the sunlight from the field, and it will afford itself a little bit more defensive if Groudon had something like a rock slide. But if Groudon's looking to attack that slot, Dragon Claw is yep. all it needs. This could be a really big problem. It depends exactly how Naoto's predicted this turn. The Swords Dance set up on this Rayquaza. Eric relying on this one Pokemon to see him through the rest of this game and keep his tournament alive. We do see an attack heading towards that protecting Kyogre. Oh, he went for Dragon Not going to be the one that he needs, though. The Dragon Claw oh. from Groudon bringing that uh, Rayquaza down to half. Most importantly, though, it's still alive. It's honestly carrying all of this tournament for Eric Rios right now. Naoto, two very healthy Pokemon. He's got to be concerned. If he doesn't Dragon Ascent the Groudon, then the Groudon's going to start taking knockouts. If you leave that Lunala for too long, it's going to do exactly the same. So I think all of the pressure right now is on Eric and his Rayquaza. He needs to pick the right target to at least give his Kyogre a fighting chance. Yeah, Naoto, though, needs to remain on the offensive. If he takes a bit of a slower turn and Eric is able to predict that and capitalize on that, Eric is going to find a way to win this game and to bring us into game three. That sword stance was a really good play there for him because that's really his out. He needs the Dragon Ascent to count. I mean, look at Rayquaza's defenses. Ooh. Look at how much health it has left. You cannot take those defense drops lightly. You have to play uh, your this is, out. This is it. Rayquaza kept itself safe with a Protect, but it doesn't really matter. You know, Eric Rios wanted to keep that one Pokemon safe, and it's the Kyogre that's felled by another Moongeist Beam really, really easily. You know, it just that's just the way the cookie crumbles sometimes. You know, we're going to see this Rayquaza really struggling to knock out all the Pokemon. A combination of Moongeist Beams and Dragon Claws. You know, yeah, I understand there's a Swords Dance in play, but I just don't think you're going to be able no. to do enough with single target damage. It's a classic two versus one situation, and the Rayquaza can only attack one of these Pokemon. And unfortunately for Eric, that Rayquaza, it will have the opportunity to knock out this Primal Groudon at this attack, but the Lunala can certainly attack into it, and Groudon is even able to hold on after that sword stance. Yep, Eric put all his eggs in the Rayquaza basket, and they're just not enough. Another Dragon Claw, this fantastic adaptation to Groudon that we've seen over the course of this tournament, winning the game for Naoto, and he's going to be the first member that I know of punching a ticket into the top four here at the Pokemon World Championships.